This setup video is gonna be a little bit different as I'm gonna show you guys how you can turn your regular PlayStation VR 2 living room gaming setup into a setup built for a streamer. Plus, if you're new to streaming, it can be a bit of a learning curve to understand how all of this technology fits together and works, but surprisingly enough, I think the PSVR 2 comes out pretty easy in this category. Let's jump into it. Okay, so to get this started, you should already have your PlayStation VR 2 headset set up with your TV and your PlayStation 5 console. If you're just taking this headset fresh out the box, then I highly recommend watching my video in the card here as I show you step by step on how to set up and use that device. If you're good there, let's jump over to the next part, which is installing a capture card with your PlayStation. Now, the one I have here is the Elgato HD60X, and the purpose of using a device like this is to pull in the gameplay picture that your PlayStation 5 console is outputting and record it to your computer or laptop. Now, it can be a Windows laptop, it can be a Mac laptop, you can use a Windows desktop too, of course. Also, when you're using a computer, you're gonna be able to have a much more custom and configurable setup versus if you're just streaming directly off of the console. One quick thing we need to do though before we set up this capture card is turn off HDCP. You'll find this setting by going to your PS5 settings, system, go to HDMI, and you'll see the option to disable this. Many capture cards won't even work if you have that setting turned on, so make sure it's off. So with the Elgato HD60X capture card, you're gonna get one HDMI out port, an HDMI in port, and then a USB-C port, which is gonna be used to connect the capture card to the computer. So luckily, what comes standard with every capture card is an HDMI cable and that USB-C or USB-A cable. First thing we're gonna unplug is the HDMI cable going into the PlayStation 5, and we're gonna plug that into the HDMI out slot because this is gonna transfer the signal from the capture card to our TV so we can still see it or the people around us can still see it. But to be honest, the HDMI out part of this tutorial is optional because you can technically see the screen in your goggles. But we'll keep it for this video demonstration. The next HDMI cable you see here came with the capture card. So this is a second HDMI cable and I'm gonna plug this into the PlayStation 5 console and then I'm gonna grab the other end of that cable and plug it into the HDMI in slot of the capture card. So that way I get the signal from the PlayStation 5 and it feeds into the capture card. And now what's the other cable that we're gonna need to get it to our computer? Well, that's gonna be that USB-C or USB-A cable that you might have that came along with your capture card as well. So let's go ahead and plug that in right there. Here's my computer. I made some space here on this table for it. Grab this end of the cable and then we can just plug it right in. The next thing we need to do here, guys, is bring in that gameplay footage into the computer. Just having it connected is, of course, not enough. So you guys can download a free live streaming software called OBS Studio. What you see up on screen now is my OBS Studio project. It's completely empty and bare for this tutorial. All I've set up is one scene for my gameplay, and I'm gonna actually add my capture card source into the scene. So all I'm gonna do is go to my sources section, select the plus button, and I'm gonna add a video capture device. I'm gonna name this HD60X. I'm gonna select the drop down here and choose Game Capture HD60X. And when I do that, you're gonna see the gameplay pop up right on screen. No other settings need to be modified. I'm gonna use the default preset, which is gonna be 1920 by 1080 at 60 FPS. That's the primary resolution that most people record or stream their gameplay in. But the beauty of this capture card is that you'll also have the ability to pass up to a 120 Hertz refresh rate, up to 2K for this particular capture card. If you wanna do 4K 120, then check out the Elgato 4KX. The other thing I wanna to add to the mix here is a face Cam. So what I have here is the OpSpot Tel Air. It can record up to 4K 30 or 1080p 60, but it is loaded to the brim with features. I know this looks like a webcam, but it's technically a camera that can work independently without the need of a computer. On the side of the device, you'll find a slot for a micro SD card so that you can record your face cam files separate from your gameplay if you're not using this camera in its webcam mode. It can work wired or wirelessly. And probably my favorite feature is the fact that it has AI tracking tracking abilities, which is perfect because when we're gaming with the VR headset on, I'm not gonna know exactly where I am in the video frame. This thing's gonna do it for us. I'm first gonna add a screen mount with a tripod adapter at the bottom, and I'm gonna add this thing right to the top of the TV. Now let's turn it on. 
I see life. And what's dope is that I can open up OpsBot Center. And in this software, I can take full control of the OpsBot tail layer, such as seeing its preview, enabling certain tracking modes. But most importantly, I can enable this camera to be used as a UVC output device so that it can be pulled into OBS. In addition to that, I also need to enable the webcam's microphone functionality so that I can have commentary in the stream. As a slight side note, I did end up using this camera directly plugged into my Mac as it was a more reliable connection than going the wireless route. And now back in OBS, I'm gonna stay within my gameplay scene. And then within the sources, I'm gonna select the plus button again, add a video capture device again, and I'm gonna name this one Tail Air. Select OK, choose the drop down, and I'm gonna select Tail Air. Now I can reposition it, resize it to how I want on my screen. Holding the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on Mac, I was able to bring in the sides of the webcam towards the middle to have the perfect layout and positioning. Next, to add the audio, we can just go to our settings, audio tab, and then select the OpSpot Tail Air as one of the microphone auxiliary devices. You don't wanna use a cardio style microphone like the Blue Yeti mic, for example, because you need to be up close to that microphone to get the best sound and quality. For a VR streaming setup, you wanna get a microphone that'll take in more sound of the room, such as a microphone from a webcam or even a shotgun mic. For Mic Auxiliary 2, we're gonna select the Elgato HE60X so that we get our game audio. And the beauty here, guys, is that the audio just works. It comes in automatically when I'm using the PSVR 2 headset. This is the one singular time that PlayStation allows multiple audio outputs to the TV, as well as to the PSVR 2 headset headphones. Since this is a thing specifically for this type of setup, please mute your TV or your speakers because the audio is gonna basically echo to the microphone that you're using. In my case, it's the microphone on this webcam but you, you don't want that to happen. But I think at this point, guys, this setup is all set to go. Let's see it in action. That was lit! And this is what everything looks like, all hooked up together. Also the lighting here I've been using, this is the Elgato key light. I left links in the description below for every single component to this setup, even the capture card that you can now get for a pretty good deal. As always, if you guys have any questions, shoot me a comment down below, watch the next video up on screen, and thank you guys for staying to the very end, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.